land and a, another Concorde sort of stacking up behind it. There must have been other te the, the technological advances, just like the moon landing, I don't know, gave us Teflon, for example, there must have been things associated with Concorde. Oh, absolutely many. And not least, the worldwide prestige which it won for British aviation, British engineering. And there is no doubt that the spin-off effect of Concorde um, almost immeasurable. For instance, Airbus would not have been formed had it not been th for the cooperation between England and, and France in the construction of the ceremony. Another thing we haven't mentioned, it, which is unique, is the thrust of power when Concorde accelerates from the cruising speed of a normal jumbo to supersonic speed and you literally go back in your seat like that. There she comes. But this of course is absolutely the reverse process. Lovely. She's such a gorgeous sight when she comes into land. She always reminds me of some swan touching down on a lake or something. Yes. It's such an elegant, long-necked beautiful creature. We haven't mentioned the droop snoot, the famous drop of honour around the airport <laughs> to come onto the stand. John, I'm, just tell me what you're thinking now. I was actually thinking about the staff at Kennedy Airport, the British Airways staff, who will miss it madly. They were fantastic to us. In fact, the whole of the Port of New York Authority and the air traffic controllers at Kennedy Airport were treated Concord uh, with tremendous um, uh, help and assistance and cooperation. Tell me this, being a pilot on Concord, were you treated as somehow something different? So a, a cut above the rest almost? I mean, I'm, or that maybe other pilots felt a little chippiness because it, to fly that beautiful thing? It wasn't us that were a cut above the rest. It was that aeroplane that was a cut above the rest. We were very, all we were were the privileged pilots and flight engineers who were allowed to operate that aeroplane. And did you feel that? Look, here oh, it comes now. I certainly did feel that. And down she comes. She's just settling down. Ah, lovely. A puff of smoke from the Perfect. wheels. And then once that nose wheel touches down, there's going to be the reverse thrust of the carbon fiber brings smooth action. The aircraft to bring it back for what has been a relatively short period of time. I'll tell you what I do think, very strongly indeed, I don't believe that British Airways should ever have grounded their Concords. And but, you can um, see, we can, I think we can see the Union flag poking out of the window there. Yes. As possibly the most famous nose in the world. <laughs> and you just look at the people behind, the, the ground crew, they've probably all got other things they're meant to be getting on with. But the whole airport, I suspect, at Heathrow has come to a halt for these three Concords. Just to go back very briefly to what you were saying, if you cast your mind back, you'll remember that after that dreadful event at Paris, uh, British Airways carried on operating their Concords for about three weeks, with a whole lot of very tight checks and procedures agreed with the Civil Aviation Authority. And it was eventually, I'm afraid, uh, pressure mainly from France uh, that uh, it ended up with the grounding of the airport.